Hello and welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig and we are in Times Square at Starshop Studio and we are thinking a little bit ahead. We always love having a good plastic surgeon on our show and today we have a veteran plastic surgeon, Dr. Farrow Shafai. I've been in his office. He's amazing and he is going to talk to us about some of the new trends for 2020. That's the beautiful thing about cosmetic surgery. There are always new trends that are going on. And today, we thought we'd go over some of the trends that are being forecasted as being the hot new treatments to get. There's the hybrid breast augmentation. There's the lip lifts. There's the liquid rhinoplasty the 3D facelift and the PRP treatments for microneedling for both hair growth, for your eyebrows, your scalp, and you can even use it on your skin. So I actually, that's right. what we did together. I don't think we have a picture. We have a picture on my Instagram if you wanna see me getting treated for microneedling, which I enjoyed. I thought it yeah. felt really good. Okay, these new trends. Why are they hot right now? Uh, the breast augmentation, a lot of people worry about the implants. So uh, injecting your own fat uh, to the breast is one way. They call it the, the hybrid breast augmentation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's very careful because the, the injection is under the skin. Okay. It's not in the breast tissue. And the people, they do this hybrid breast augmentation, they should be really trained, uh, like plastic surgeons, mm -hmm. and uh, they get uh, fat from your abdomen because there is the highest uh, uh, stem cells of fat in your lower abdomen. And, and maybe the most fat as well. The, and Just inner speaking thighs. from personal uh, yeah. yes, and thighs. Your inner thighs. So uh -huh. th they get the fat, they uh, process it, and then they inject it to the skin. The key is really injecting under the skin. Yeah. And if you go deeper, this fat sometimes they die and become calcified. Mm -hmm. And then when you do a mammogram, that calcification raises a question uh, that they should biopsy it mm -hmm. uh, or they just leave it alone. Uh, but now with this injection, most of the radiologists, they know mm -hmm. that this type of can the area that they injected, if she has a history of Botolic is fat injection, so they're not worried about doing a biopsy. Like the old time, they keep doing biopsy mm. because the fat was injected too deep to the breast tissue. Ah, it was so, underneath the muscle, right? Uh, over the muscle to the breast tissue, okay. sometimes into the muscle, but mostly they should be under the skin and not deeper than under the skin. And I would imagine with this hybrid uh, breast augmentation, that one's own fat is better for the of body, course. right? Because you're not having that plastic and toxins, which yes. just sounds unhealthy, yeah. even though yeah. people can tolerate it. And when you get a, a augmentation, you have to switch it, or they recommend that you switch every the implant years. every 10 no. years. Yes, With the hybrid, you, do you, don't, you don't have to switch no. anything because it's your fat. But there is one thing that I'd like to mention here is uh, if you are a person that you gain weight, your breasts get larger. Yes. And you lose weight, your breasts get smaller. Uh huh. That's what I do with a lot of my patients, and the result is great. Not for everybody. Okay. But only people that with weight loss and weight gain, their breast changes. You can gain weight, and I go and take all the area that is bothering you, like your waist your love handle, uh -huh. your saddle bags, and then yeah. we inject it. Uh, we don't have to inject it. We just get the, the breast, the, the fat out, Yeah. and then they gain weight again. Right. And now the fat is not in those areas. Uh, they go to the breast. And I have, I have How great is that? multiple patients that I did this technique, but you have to make sure that when they lose weight, the breast gets smaller. When they gain yeah. weight, the breast gets bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic. I, you don't have to do anything. You just do oh a life and, and then you can eat weight. what you want? Yeah. Oh, I'm all about that. That's a brilliant <laughs> discovery. That really is. Okay. The next trend.
trend is with the lips. And I think we have all seen when people get lip injections, some of it is really unnatural and is not a look that I like, but some people really love that look. Yeah. Now people want a more natural look and they are shaping the lips, but a lip lift is something different than an injectable. I actually had a patient who did this. Yes. So how is, what is a lip lift lip and how is, is it different? If you look at the, the Chinese miniature or the Chinese picture or the geisha, uh -huh. you can see the, the red part of the lips is not really on the side, uh -huh. it's all in the middle. So it's the, kind of, we have a picture right there where you can see kind of how it's defined a little bit. Yeah, if yeah. you see this one, you right. know, it's mostly in the, the middle of uh, yeah. middle of lips and it's not like the whole lips come like a duck. Right, it's know, like that, almost like doll-like yeah, lips. Yeah. yeah, so they be kind of uh, sculpt the area in the middle. Some people, they need uh, the filtrum to be injected also because these are flat in the older uh -huh. person. So we make it injected right ah. under there to make the cupid bow for them again. Now, is this so. surgical? Because there are some people that have their lip kind of made closer to their nose. They actually slit somewhere. Yeah, they uh, they call it actually um, Salvador Dali. Okay. Uh, because the, the his mustache. Oh yes, yes. So the the cut is right under the the uh, nose. Uh huh and then we go under the skin all the way here and we come to the red part of the lip and you lift it and up and you lift it up maybe half a centimeter mm. you take it out so the lip really turn out mm -hmm. these are for people that really severely they have no lip like yeah. me <laughs> i'll be good candidate for that and then this area you know gradually the pink area heals because uh -huh. when it comes out it dries out because it's mucosa it's not really a skin Okay. So, but the scar is right here. Some people they heal beautiful, some people they don't heal beautiful. Oh, so that's that's that the, seems kind of risky. Yeah. It it is risky, uh, you know. But but it says here that you know for the fillers, it's Restylane and Juvederm are the most commonly used. Yes, yes. And why do you think this is so popular now? Do you think we just it's just what we think is beautiful or because we can do it, we can change the lip shape? I, I think uh, the lip is really a beautiful part of uh, any female, you know, with a kind of a voluptuous, mm -hmm. fuller lips you get. So that's, that's what it is now. People, they like it, you know, people that have a nicer lip, you know, everybody compliment them with mm -hmm. the lips and everything. And I inject some of my patients that uh, 100% against the lip injection. Uh -huh. And when I inject them, and the next day, you know, they swell up. Uh -huh. And then the way out, the two days later, they call me and they said, I love it. They, it's like having, and it's I, like, yeah. in a way, having a new face. Yeah, it, it kind of makes you a younger look too. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because we separate from the, the vermilion border, the line and the lip gradually get depression in the middle when your age goes up. So filling that part. We lose volume is, yeah, really yeah, in our face. Yeah. So yes. the older one gets, you kind of lose that plumper look. It's yes. not just wrinkles. Yeah. It's yeah. just, and your facial structure changes underneath as well. Yes, they which, actually, the study shows that your um, forehead comes forward oh. and your chin comes forward oh. and your middle part of your face goes backward. So like, you just kind of who decided on like that? A, <laughs> like who who made that happen? Well, with plastic surgery, we we kind of protect those. We yes, let thank them God, happen. thank God, you guys exist. Yeah. Okay, something I'm really interested in because I just have so many questions about it: the liquid rhinoplasty. Yes. Now the old rhinoplasty was surgical. They would break the nose, realign it you almost look like you were in a car accident, right? Because I had one many, many years ago. This is very different. Tell me about this process. Liquid rhinoplasty is really not for everybody. Okay. If somebody has a very large nose, you have to do surgery to reduce it. Yeah. But if somebody has some imperfection, you can always go inject them with a Restylane or Juvederm or something to fill up that area. Some people, they have a 
big hump on mm -hmm. the top and it's very deep on the top of it. Mm -hmm. So you go and fill up that depression in that area and then makes it like, you know, the nothing that you don't have a hump. And how long does the <coughs> liquid rhinoplasty last? Because this is temporary. Yes, depends on the material you use. Usually Juvederm or uh, Restylane. I use personally Restylane. And that uh, lasts between six to eight months. In some people, they last longer. Okay. But if you use your own fat, then, you know, we process it good and you inject it, it lasts for good. You know, it might be 10 years, five years, 10 if years. If you use your own fat. Own fat, yeah. I've done a lot of people, uh, boxers, you know, they, uh -huh. they broke their nose and yeah. they see I inject in their own fat. And actually you're talking about bodybuilder, I inject one bodybuilder that he wanted a little bit fixed and I did on her own, uh, his own fat. Uh -huh. And he was, he was amazingly happy. With so it, one's yeah. own fat is ideal. Now, is that a different process? Because that's liposuction, right? Or is there another way to well, take Well, the out? amount we need is really uh, minute. Okay. You know, you just have a syringe and you, you drop maybe three cc to five cc, nothing really. It's not that Not much. a big process, no. Um, and there's no swelling with this or is there swelling with? Uh, they usually, we all time, we used to inject a lot. Now with this new technique that we separate the fat and we, when we harvest it, we try to get the fat without killing them. Mm -hmm. So we inject it and it uh, kind of lasts a long time. Mm -hmm. now. Okay, the 3D facelift is also um, thought to be a new trend in 2020. How is the 3D facelift different from the traditional facelift? And now they're doing mini facelifts. Yeah, the, the, the 3D uh, really facelift, they call it, is not a kind of a, uh, taking the skin or everything. You take the fat from your body and you kind of sculpt your face. You put mm -hmm. it on your cheeks, you put it on your temporal area because when we get old, this area starts going down and become deeper and deeper. It sounds like uh, from your description, we become witch-like. It's like <laughs> their forehead goes forward or backward and yeah, so injecting, chin comes out. Injecting especially these areas yeah. is amazingly changes the face. And then we inject the corner of the uh, mandible here uh -huh. to pull this back, you know, to give a nice, nice break and inject the lips, injecting the nasal labial, pyrolyst hole. So it's your own fat is really not dangerous at all. You, know, you don't re uh, react to it. And how many years does it take off when you do a 3D facelift? It, I have seen people really, they look 10 years younger. 10 years younger. 10 years younger. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. You know, recently is all maintenance. Yeah. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. You know, we don't jump in the big operation. But right. it's just maintaining what you have, maintain the good look and keep maintaining it. Anything goes down, you try to correct it, you know. Now if you don't have, you're very skinny and you don't have fat, mm -hmm. there is a... Uh, That's not been my problem. So if, if, if you fat. have a patient that needs extra fat <laughs> and right around the corner, <laughs> call me because I'll, I'll be there. No, a scalp <laughs> is another thing, the soft tissue filler. Uh, I love it. You know, yeah. One of the best things is really a scalp from, and they make it for AIDS patients oh. who fill up their faces. Yes. And they saw what a great result, so they started cosmetic, and like 10, 12 years ago, FDA approved it for cosmetic use. Uh huh. And it's amazing. Yeah. I, I think what's so nice about the surgical trends right now is that you don't necessarily need the anesthesia which can be dangerous sure. if you have too much surgery and it's minimally invasive and so to have that as an option is so wonderful for people and I think that's why so many more people are choosing this kind of maintenance because yes. you can do an injectable and you know what we did in your office we'll talk about that, which is the micro abrasion and micro needling. You know, I went to you and then I went straight to my office and I went yes, to work. Yeah. Um, and, and what do they call them? Lunchtime procedures yeah. where people can just go in and the downtime isn't that great. And I imagine it's safer if you're going yeah. to a board certified physician. Surgeon, yeah. Yes. That's yeah. very important. 
Okay, so this is what I had done, and I will show pictures. We had a good time, too, right? It was enjoyable. I had a good time. I had a good, <laughs> I I had a good time. time. <laughs> I had a great time. I have a great time. So I did something called microdermabrasion with the PRP. The micro needling. And microneedling. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. I did the microneedling. Micro um, and how is the microdermabrasion different? Is that more of microdermabrasion the... usually done by aesthetician? Okay. They sandblast uh, okay. your skin, or they use water or a spatula. Okay. To this was off. something more intense. So, yeah. <clears throat> why don't you kind of take us through what you did and what PRP is yes. and why it's so, you know, effective? Yes. PRP is actually is a plasma-rich platelet. We draw your blood and then we spin it. We separate the platelet. Mm -hmm. And uh, because platelet has so many growth factors in them, so that's whenever you inject it in some area, it makes it, you know, the skin look beautiful. It makes collagen, you make mm -hmm. heal the wound, you know, a uh, lot of things. And then there is a, there is a micro needling that there is like 20 needles uh, that it goes to your skin and depends of uh, how deep you want to go, different type of mm -hmm. size, and there is a, a new um, product that they call it the stamp. So what it is, is a micro needling, but there is a container on the top mm. that we add the PRP, uh, we can add uh, hyaluronic acid, we can add uh, uh, disport uh, mm -hmm. or any neurotoxin to it, we can add saline to it, or any type of vitamins you want delivered mm. to your skin, you can go with the stamp. And it's not really painful. You just do a little bit local topical. I mean, it was yeah. not painful for me. Yeah. In fact, I yeah. really liked the sensation. Yeah. I really did. I found it kind go, of meditative. Yeah. And also when you know that you're doing something that's good for you, yes. that's part of maintenance, can you determine whether somebody needs, you know, something other than PRP, like needs a vitamin um, as part of this little stamp? Do you yeah, determine? Most of, most of people that they're smoker, Okay. They need nutrition, you know, to add to their uh, PRP mm -hmm. and, and deliver it to their skin so their skin becomes uh, nicer because the nicotine causes the uh, circulation to the surface become mm -hmm. really less and less and the skin become almost like grayish color. I mean, I used to smoke <laughs> intermittently way, way back in the day, but once I heard that smoking makes you look older, that was it. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. Not about lung cancer, <laughs> not about being healthy. I was like, make you look older and have wrinkles, you forget get it. Older. <laughs> yeah, so the PRP just is the blood that's separated, so the red part is not what you are putting into the skin. It's just the PRP, which looks clear. Like, yeah, it, it looks clear. clear. And uh, the, the, uh, that day we mixed a little bit of uh, blood to the to the syringe. That's what you were read. Yeah. But usually it doesn't. There's, there's no change. It's only uh, turned a little bit pinkish, but mm -hmm. not 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 bloody or anything. Yeah. And you need to do that if you do it once. Is that enough? Or do, no, is it something? No, usually three times. Three times. Three times until you get a great result. You know, yeah. that's the whole thing. Is not. The numbers is really so it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You, know, you might have one treatment and you look fantastic. You might have two treatments and you look great. So it's, it's so anywhere from one to three treatments. One to three treatment usually is, is sufficient. And how much are these treatments like for the microneedling? How much in in general? How much does well, that it cost? Well, it depends on uh, which area you do. You uh -huh. know, you do in New York City, which doctor you do. Yeah. You know, it ranges uh, from five hundred dollars to thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah. As I said, depends who is doing it mm -hmm. for you and where you're going yeah. to do the procedure. So it's a different, different, uh, different numbers. We have something called the Quick Five, and so we had our audience ask some questions that they wanted your help answering. Oh, and so sure. we're going to start with a Quick Five. First question: Who is a candidate for a liquid nose job? versus a yeah, traditional. If, if somebody has done uh, rhinoplasty and there is some imperfection in the nose, instead of going back to have surgery again, it's the best thing to have a liquid rhinoplasty mm -hmm. to, to correct that area. Some people, they have a little bump on the top. Yeah. They don't need really rhinoplasty. They have to just fill up the superior part of it. Mm -hmm. So it becomes like a straight, you know, without any surgical intervention. Some people, they have a very flat nose, they can inject their own fat and bring some 
high to it. So Does it require a different level of training? Like once they introduce the liquid rhinoplasty, then do you need some kind of training to do it? Or can you just fall back on, on your skills? No, you have to really, first of all, you have to be trained in plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of, lot of uh, uh, people they call plastic surgery, but they don't call themselves plastic surgeon. Mm. That's the difference. If you call yourself plastic surgeon, you have to be uh, trained by the plastic surgery, uh, you know, uh, uh, programs. Mm -hmm. You can't just call yourself plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. So if you see, they call themselves cos cosmetic plastic surgery or facial plastic surgery, but they're not plastic surgeons. Okay. Plastic surgeons are different. Uh, breed of doctors who train in plastic surgery. And, and just so everyone knows, we are going to make sure to have um, Dr. Shafai's website up there so you can find out more information sure. too, um, which is medfem.com and we'll have a link up. Okay. So, what are the advantages of using these less invasive procedures versus well, there the is, more uh, less downtime. Mm -hmm. Is much cheaper than yeah. a surgical uh, intervention, and the result is immediate. You know, you don't have to wait. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I like that they're less invasive. Yes, and um, that anesthesia doesn't always need to be used. There's something comforting about so. that. Okay. At what age should women or men consider having these procedures done? Well, um, I always ask my patient, ask um, where should I do it? I said. When you look at the mirror every night and mm -hmm. you pull your skin up or you do something and if you do it every night, it means you need to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if you once in a while you look at it, you might, you know, you can wait a little longer. You don't have to do it right now. Yeah, so it's really, there's a, it's, it's very personal. Yes. And what I like about the, the changing trends in terms of cosmetic surgery is that a lot of people are coming in as a result of selfies and looking at themselves yeah. saying this is what I want and that's very different than God 30 years ago when it would be the plastic surgeon saying you need a tweak here this you need is, a tweak yeah. there people are really driving you know where they want or what they want their face to look like and how they want to look and it's more interactive so I just saw the Instagram took all the plastic surgery filters out of the program Oh, really? They can't do that anymore. Ah, yes, right. Yeah, that's, that's like cheating, right? Well, they, they decided that they don't want really uh, those filters in this yeah. place anymore for plastic surgery. Interesting. Okay, one more question. How long does each process take? So how long does a liquid facelift take? Uh, it depends on the surgeon again. Yeah. Well, some surgeons are really fast, some uh -huh. surgeons are not fast. So it's, I should say between one hour, two hours, you can, you can do all this procedure. And the lip lifts? Lip lift is 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, the facelift? Surgery? Yeah. That again is one and a half hour to four hours, okay. five hours. Depends on the surgeon. The microneedling was two micro hours from beginning. Microneedling was two to, hours. Yeah, yeah, that was two yeah. hours. And, um, well, it, if you do, I'm sorry to interrupt you, if you do microneedling with only hyaluronic acid and mm -hmm. Botox, it takes half an hour. Hmm. You know, you don't have, if you don't get the PRP yeah. with it. But we like the PRP. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then it seems like the breast augmentation is the most intense. Yeah, that's uh, more timing. Yeah. You know, it takes yeah. two or three hours, depends on how difficult Terrific. the case is. Terrific. Did we miss anything? No, I think we went through all Yeah, the, we went through all the, the hot trends of 2020. <laughs> um, thank you so much for oh, joining us. We're my gonna pleasure. have a link up so people can find you. And your office, you have an office in New Jersey. Yes. Is it Summit? Summit, New Jersey, is, and I have an office in Manhattan And also. an office uh, in, on Park yeah, Avenue. 895 Park 95 Avenue. 95 Park Avenue, great. Um, so in New York and in New Jersey, yes. people can come and see you directly. There's a website. If people want to fly in, they can always fly in to see you as well, sure. whatever they want. And thank you for joining us. Feel free to ask us any questions you have about this show, and we'll see you next week.